very much, Pastor. Thank you, Cameroon. Today we are in Douala. I told you before, I'll be coming back to Cameroon. Next time here, listen. Next time, Yaoundé. The Lord is blessing you. And tonight, the blessing of God will multiply in your life. I was, uh, I was passing by somewhere. And I, I saw a signboard. And I looked at it. They said, carry, go. Tonight, a sign from heaven. Carry, go. What are you? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you tonight. Miracle to carry. Salvation to carry. Healing to carry. Joy to carry. And it will be permanent in every life in Jesus' name. Bless the nation of Cameroon. Bless the church in Cameroon. Bless every individual connected right now. Bless the rest of the world through Douala. Lay your hand upon everyone. Touch everyone miraculously. Confirm your miracle in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> God bless you. You can sit down. As we come to a conclusion of the series of messages on the transforming touch. That come through the unchangeable Christ. We round up everything today with permanent heaven watch transformation. Transformation coming from heaven. Transformation changing us for heaven. Transformation that leads us in the direction of heaven. A kind of transformation that will be permanent. <clears throat> permanent heavenward transformation by the unchanging Christ. It's unchangeable. It's unchanging. And your life tonight, it will touch you. It will transform you. That unchangeable Christ is still the same as ever. And tonight is your own night. I'm reading to you about a person. About a preacher. About a partaker. About a possessor. I read the story to you. So you will know how others partook of the blessing of God. And you follow the same path. And you go the same way. What they partook of. Tonight you'll partake of. And what they had. You will have. Amen. Your amen. Must show that you are there. Waiting for the impartation. The story is in Isaiah chapter 6. And from verse 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne. 
it was a negative thing that happened in that nation. Isaiah said, it was the year that King Uzziah died. Sometimes when something negative happens in our life, Papa died. Mama died. Somebody died. A breadwinner died. A mighty powerful person died. A great helper died. Were dejected because of Uzziah that died. And Isaiah said, It was in the year that Uzziah died, he now saw the Lord. If anything that happened in your life this year, the Lord will turn it around. You will see the Lord. You see the power of the Lord. The might of the Lord in your, in your life. You will see that although Uzziah had gone, God is still sitting on the throne. He never quits where he sits. The seat of power. The seat of creation. The seat of mind, the storm may rage, the sea may roar, animals may run up and down, joy might have led the vicinity where you are, sickness might come, some parts of your body, they are gone and dead. The Lord is still sitting on the throne for you. He said, I saw. I want to invite you tonight for all your problems to roll away. Don't look at what is dead, what is gone. Look at God sitting on the throne. High and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With a twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. In verse 3, it tells us, and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. It's always holy. While darkness comes, it's always holy. While Uzziah vacates the throne, God is still holy. When your helpers turn their back on you, the Lord is still holy. When the powers of darkness, when they rage, the Lord is still holy. When you feel sad, when you feel depressed, when you feel sick, when you are emotionally drained, the Lord God is still on the throne and the Lord is still holy. If we realize that every time, the death of Uzziah will never shake us. The withdrawal of our helpers will never shake us. The coming of disease will never shake us. If we realize our God is on the throne, He's still holy, He's still loving, He's still faithful, He's still powerful, He's still wonderful, 
and he is still our helper, our healer, our savior, our deliverer, and the one that conquers for us. Then in verse 4, it says, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then in verse 5, it says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. In verse 6, it says, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal, in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from off the altar. And then in verse 7. Then he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. This has touched thy lips. And thine iniquity is taken away. Your transgression taken away. Your guilt taken away. Your condemnation taken away. Is a touch divine, the heavenly touch that takes all your sins away. Is a touch of God, the touch of Christ. That takes all your transgression, all your iniquity away. And thy sin purged. Then in verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. The touch that brings transformation. Heavenward transformation. Permanent transformation. Through the unchangeable Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Tells us Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Savior, the same yesterday, today and forever. Our healer, the same yesterday, today and forever. The conqueror of death and the conqueror of the devil, the same yesterday, today and forever. Your helper, your lifter up is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The one who touched them in days gone by and is going to touch you tonight, say amen. Is going to touch you tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The unchangeable Christ, the unchangeable Savior, the unchangeable Sanctifier, the unchangeable Conqueror, the same yesterday and today and forever. And in Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen, Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen. But we all with open face beholding 
as in a glass the glory of the Lord, like Isaiah saw, you will see in Jesus' name, were changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That's the source of our transformation. That is the certainty of our transformation. That is the power that comes to transform our lives. Permanent, heavenward transformation by the unchangeable Christ. It came to Isaiah. It's, it's coming to you. It came to all those people that believe. And as you believe tonight, the unchangeable Christ, Savior, and Redeemer, it will turn your life around for the better. And everything you have got during this GCK of May 2024 will be permanent in your life. We're looking at three things in the message tonight. Number one, the convicting confession of prophet, prince, penitent. I say I was a prophet. He was penitent, repentant before the Lord. David was a prince. He was penitent, repentant before the Lord. The people of Nineveh, they were people, but sinful people, they were penitent before the Lord. Anyone to receive a blessing from the Lord, we don't come with pride. Look who I am. We don't come with high esteem. I am so and so. You're a prophet, you're a preacher, you're a minister, you're a member of a church, you were born in a good church, and you've been faithfully going to that good church. Very good and very nice. But we come before the Lord, repentant, penitent. And we make a convicting confession. The convicting confession of prophet, prince, and penitent. Number two, the cleansing cure for pardoned, purged people. He touched the leaves of Isaiah. He pardoned your iniquity, taken away. He was pardoned. And your sin purged. And that's what's going to happen to all people that come, like I say, I came. He forgives. He cleanses. He kills. He heals. He turns lives around. And that's why we came. That the heavenly fire, heavenly torch will come upon us. And every sin that had burden you, the Lord will pardon. And every sin that you carried about with shame, with dirt, with defilement, the Lord will wash you clean tonight. It's a cleansing kill. Number three is the, commend, is the commendable continuation in peace, purity, power. After we have received the divine touch and he has given us peace in our heart, we now follow the path of purity. That's what I say I did. That's why God said, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? 
the man that had peace in their heart. He said, here I am, send me. The man that had purity of heart, holiness of life, sanctification in his system. And the one who knows God is a holy God. He just said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. And to run an errand for that holy God. He must be holy. He had peace. He had purity. And then God gave him power. The Lord will give you power. Power to live triumphantly. Power to live and walk in the path that gets to heaven. Continuation, continuation. The commendable continuation in peace, purity, and power. Let's come to number one. The convicting confession of prophet, prince, penitent. In Isaiah chapter 6, reading from verse 5. Then said I, it's Isaiah that is talking now. You have seen the glory of God. You know, my friend, tonight, when you wear a white shirt, and you think it's white, and then you come across another shirt that has not been what but has been made and is spotlessly white and it is snowy white and is whiter than what you have ever seen in your life. And you look at the dress you wear, you thought it was white. In comparison with this incredibly white clothes, you now know that your own is not white enough. Isaiah had been carrying the notion, I am holy. I am right. I am good. I am wonderful. He was looking at his own white shirt. But now when he saw the whiteness of the glory of the almighty God, immaculate. He came under conviction. He said, woe is me. If I'm going to get to heaven and live with this immaculately white and pure God, I am undone. My friend, as you come here tonight, and you think you're all right, that's what the Pharisees thought. We are all right. We've never been slave to anybody. We're the children of Abraham. Until any of them will see the whiteness and the purity and the immaculate nature of Christ that came from heaven. When you look at the thoughts of your heart, and God says, look at that thought. My thoughts are not your thoughts. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. As you look at your ways, and you look at the way of God, and it says that the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And if God were to take you by your thoughts, by your ways, by your character, by your inward life, by your private life, you'll have to say, woe is me. You will have to confess, I am undone. 
As you look at what you taught, as you look at your slandering people, as you look at telling lies to other people, white lie, black lie, brown lie, psychological lie, lie to get out of problem, lie to your family members, lies to your children. Lies and cheating to examiners. As you look at the watch of your mouth. And you see the truthfulness of God immaculate. You will have to accept who is me. I am a man of unclean lips. As you look at the angels. And the angels never, never, never pronounce any bad word. They always count themselves in the presence of God. All they say is holy, holy, holy. Their utterance, holy. Their language, holy. Their communication, holy. Their interaction, holy. And as you see those angels that with two wings, they cover their feet. They're very careful, meticulous, watchful in the presence of God. Their talk and their walk. And they cover their face. They are respectful and humble before the Almighty. And also compare your life with even those angels. You talk when they are quiet. You walk about and step anywhere. You leap before you think. You will have to bend the knee before the Lord who is me, for I am undone. As you see, even the good things you do, you give money to those who are in need, but you want a thank you. You want appreciation. You want recognition. And if they don't give you that recognition, that appreciation, you say, I'm not going to help them anymore. As you see all the strings you tie to your gift, even your so good work, your so called good works, does not match the gift of God that He gives unto us. You have to say, Who is me? I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean leaves. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean leaves. I say, What's the problem? Enoch also lived in the midst of unclean, sinful people. What's your problem? You live in the midst of a people of unclean leaves. He said, Pastor, Enoch is different. Enoch rebuked them. Enoch said, judgment is coming. That God will come with ten thousands of his saints. He will judge the sinners. He will judge the scoffers. He will judge the people that are living in flagrant sin. He says, I dwell in the midst of unclean people. As I dwell among them, I became like a chameleon. I took the color and the nature of the people around me. I didn't rebuke them. I didn't challenge them. When they told lies, I smiled. 
when they were wicked to other people, I was looking at them with delight. That's why, that's why he said I'm undone. I do not challenge sinners. I do not wake up those dead consciences. I dwelt happily with them. He said, why am I saying that now? Why am I confessing that now? Because my eyes have seen the Lord, the King. The Lord of hosts. But you know, conversion, uh, sorry, confession will bring conversion. Tonight. I said tonight. Are you there? I said tonight. Your confession will bring conversion. It is that coming before the Lord. Accepting who you are. You are a sinner. Accepting in your own strength, in your own power. You cannot cut off your lips. You cannot cut off your tongue. And you cannot cleanse your tongue by yourself. Water does not cleanse the tongue. The water may come from River Jordan. You wash your mouth with River Jordan water. It does not cleanse your tongue. Water does not take away lying from the tongue. Words of anger from the tongue. Words of slander from the tongue. The only thing is the heavenly agent coming unto you. And that heavenly agent will touch you tonight, forgive you, set you free, and cleanse you. I love that. Amen. Say another amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from every sin. Tonight is your night. This final night will deal a final blow to the sin of your life. Amen. And then... And then, after that, the Lord will change everything in your life. Because you are going to have peace. You are going to have purity. You are going to have power. You know, when we come for a crusade like this, there are some people who are saved. And they come as spectators. They said, I'm saved already. And so what will I, why should I think I'm going to have anything? You will not be a spectator. You will be a partaker. If you have peace already, you will have purity. If you have peace and purity already, you will have power. You know, there are some people there, instead of waiting for their own transformation, they are judging the preacher. They are saying, preacher, this is crusade. And why are you talking about holiness and sanctification? Because of you. Because you claim to be saved. And you are not holy yet. And you are not sanctified yet. And you are not following peace with all men. 
You are even fighting with the preacher while he's preaching. You are not following peace with the preacher. Who are you talking about holiness? I'm talking about holiness because of you. Why are you talking about sanctification in a crusade? I'm talking about sanctification because the people that have peace must have purity. Why are you talking about power? Because see how long you have been saved. I'm born again, I'm born again. And you don't have the power to open your mouth and talk to your neighbor about salvation. You don't have power to stand. Power to resist evil. And power to correct all those people of unclean lips around you. And that's why God is talking to you about peace and purity and power. Tonight, we will have peace. Tonight, we will have purity. Tonight, we will have power. Amen. We're looking at point number two. The cleansing cure for pardoned, purged, people. The touch of the Lord cleanses us. The touch of the Lord cures us. Tonight, conversion. Tonight, kill. Tonight, conquering power. Tonight, confidence and in your backbone, you will stand. You remember Isaiah? I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. And I cannot even talk to them. I can talk general. I can announce general. But I cannot confront the people in my front. And the people by my side that you have unclean lips. When that power touched him. And God said. Whom shall I save? And who will go for us? Power came into his life. He said. Here am I. Send me. That power will come to you tonight. Authority in your life tonight. Confidence in your life tonight. First. The cleansing kill. For the pardoned, the purged people. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me. He said then, that means immediately after I confessed. Immediately an angel flew to me. Came directly to me. Forgiveness will come directly to you tonight. Cleansing will come directly to you tonight. Salvation will come directly to you tonight. Having a live coal in his hand. Which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Remember, there's a seraphim. Remember, there's an angel. He brought that coal from the altar of heaven. There were many altars in Israel. All those people that were serving in those altars, they were not forgiven, they were not cleansed. And all the coals of all the altars of that nation could not take away sin. He took that from heaven. And he came to Isaiah directly. 
You know, my friends say tonight, when something from heaven comes upon you, there will be transformation. It's good we do follow up. It's good we're following up the people that say they give their lives to the Lord. Can I tell you something? I didn't have anybody that came to follow me up when I was born again. I didn't have anybody running after me. Begging me. Pleading with me. Come to church. Come to church. I was born again. My life was changed. I was the one running to the church. But you know somebody says I'm born again. And the counselors are dutiful. They are faithful enough to come to you. And you're still there dragging your feet. Okay, come next time. I'll come later. Where is your salvation? Nobody told me about quiet time. They just didn't tell me. I was the one that started reading the Bible when I was born again. I knew nothing in the Bible. Before I was born again, I didn't know the difference between apostle and epistle. Really, difference between apostle and epistle, I didn't know before I became born again. And nobody put any pressure on me. I just began to love the Bible. To read the Bible. A change had come in my life. When a change comes in your life, you'll be the one running after the Bible. You'll be the one saying, these messages I heard at the Dwala GCK, I want more, I want more. And then you'll be searching on YouTube, you'll be searching online, you will be devouring, you will be eating, and you'll be taking in the word of God. That's how it happened to me. I didn't know gospel songs. Before I was born again, I became born again. And my heart didn't want to sing the songs of the world anymore. And I began to sing. Just obey, just obey is the way God's way. When he speaks to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey, just obey. I learned it. I sang it. I sang it in the morning, sang it in the afternoon, sang it in the evening, sang it in my dreams. Nobody imposed anything on me. But because I had the peace of God, I had the touch of God. I was the one searching. How can I grow? How can I glow? How will my light so shine before me? And when we went to church, nobody told me to be taking notes. I didn't see people taking notes. At their preaching, I'm opening my Bible. I'm writing what I could write. When I get back home, I'm checking up. I'm checking up. I'm checking up. Nobody ran after me to say you must write Bible verses and some notes when they are preaching. That change will come upon your life. I said that change will come upon your life. 
Because the heavenly touch will come upon you. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, And he laid it upon my mouth. Isaiah saw that angel bringing the life coal. He didn't dodge. He didn't put his mouth away. He didn't say, that thing will burn my lips. There are people that run from the life coal of the word of God when it is hot coming from the altar of the Lord. They say, no, it will burn. No, it will cleanse. It will take the interest of my old life away from me. But Isaiah presented his lips a smile. And the seraphim laid the coal upon his mouth. And he said, Lo, this has touched thy lips. Thine Iniquity is taken away. A voice from heaven. The witness of the Spirit of God. Bearing witness with your heart. Your sins are forgiven. That is more than a thousand counselors trying to tell you, trying to encourage you. Don't worry, he has forgiven you. You will know in your heart. The Spirit of God will bear witness with your heart, your sin taken away. And thy sin purged. You know, people talk about assurance, assurance. Isaiah had assurance because that voice spoke to him, your sin, your transgression, your iniquity taken away. Every doubt will vanish from your heart because your life now is new. All the guilt you have taken away all the condemnation you have taken away. And every, every sin of impurity, of defilement, you don't, you don't have interest in them anymore. Because the interest for sinfulness, the interest for transgression, everything taken away. That the cleansing he wants to give us. And thy sin purged. This is supernatural. This is heavenward transformation. He will do it for you. I said he will do it for you. And as the hand of the Lord touches you here tonight. When you go out there into the office or market or anywhere, you will see how they are talking. You will not be interested anymore. You will see their worldly music. You will not be interested anymore. You will see their idol worship and festival and masquerades. You will not be interested anymore because the torch of heaven has come in your heart. And then the Lord will take every sickness away from you. Everybody say amen. I'm going to show you one verse in Isaiah. It's chapter 33, verse 24. Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 24. And the inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people 
of the land who are forgiven shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. Because pardon had come. Because forgiveness had come. Sickness will vanish away. What are you? Your sickness is going tonight. Sin will go. Sickness will go. Amen. You will stand up like a soldier. Demonstrate it. Stand up. Let me see you like a soul. That standing power will never leave your life. The people who see you standing in health, they'll say, I want to be like this man. They will mention your name. When they talk about strength, they will mention your name. When they mention healing health, they will mention your name. Don't sit down yet. After all, I've been standing for almost one hour and I'm your father. I'm older than you are. The health I have, you will have. When somebody mentions healing and they mention health and they mention strength, they mention my name. I transfer it to you. I transfer it to you. I transfer it to you. When they mention prosperity, they will mention your name. When they mention joy, they will mention your name. Somebody meets you. He's walking in the nearby hospital. And uh, uh, you used to come every week uh, before May 2024. Since May 2024, we didn't see you again. I said we didn't see you again. The thing uh, that used to drive you there, drive you there, all those things are gone. When they mention health, you are the one they will point to. When they mention power, you are the one they will point to. Sit down in the glory of the Lord. The inhabitant shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven their iniquity. We come to number three now. The commendable continuation in peace, purity, and power. There's something commendable about Isaiah. From Isaiah chapter 6 on and on to the end of his life, he continued with the Lord. You will continue. I said you will continue. You will continue the salvation of the Lord. You will continue in sanctification, holiness. You continue the power of the Spirit of God. You will continue. And when I come back and I go to Yaoundé, you will follow me to Yaoundé. I will be there. You will be there in Jesus' name. A man of peace. A woman of peace, a boy, a girl of peace, a son of peace, a daughter of peace, a man of purity, a woman of purity, a child of purity, 
a son of purity, a daughter of purity, a mother of purity, a father of purity. And from tonight, a man of power, a woman of power. Nothing will push you down again. A child of power. Everywhere you go, the demons before you even get there will say, patch the way. He is coming. The conqueror is coming. And you will conquer all your problems. Peace. Purity. Power. And you will not be tired. Uh, permit me to talk to you. A father must talk to children. I have power. Nothing pushes me down. I'm happy. I'm joyful. I'm cheerful. I read the Bible. I have strength. I'm your father. Everyone listening to me now. Power in your life. Purity in your life. You know, as I'm preaching, there's nobody there, anywhere, that was, uh, look at the man, he's talking about purity. But I know what we do together in secret. Nobody can say that. That's the victory I transfer to you. That's the confidence I transfer to you. I am so happy you are here tonight. Heaven will descend upon your life. Did you hear the choir? He touched me. He touched me. He touched me. I knew that song many years ago. I've been singing that song in the church service. But tonight when I heard from the choir here, he touched me. I knew, afresh, the hand of the Lord touched me afresh. Tonight, afresh. Tonight, I knew the hand of the Lord is touching you. Where there is confusion and conflict, peace will come in your heart. Purity will come in your life. Power. 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 It has come already. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You want the peace of God in your heart. All your sins forgiven. Every confusion taken away from your heart. Guilt and condemnation taken away from you. It's bowed and eyes closed. Raise up your hand. Amen. God bless you there. Tonight is a night of peace. A night of forgiveness. A night of salvation. Online, raise up your hand there. Every congregation, we are all over the world, raise up your hand there. Peace, perfect peace. Peace, permanent peace. Peace, deeper than an ocean. The peace of salvation is coming to you now. There is raising up your hand, you please stand up. Wonderful. Wonderful. Stand up as you raise up your hand. Every storm in your life, there will be peace. Every sin that brings torment to your life, there will be forgiveness and peace. 
We're praying together now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the peace of God. The peace and the grace of God. The peace and the mercy of God. The peace in answer to the penitent prayer. Forgive their sins in Jesus' name. Give them peace in their hearts in Jesus' name. Turn them away from darkness to light. Take the confusion and the condemnation away. Speak to their hearts, peace be still. And you go in this peace of forgiveness. Are you a purity? Are you a power? The Lord be with you. The Lord go with you. The spirit witness in your heart that your sins are now forgiven. Go in this thy peace, purity, and power. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep on standing, keep on standing. Our counselors are there. We're calling on our national overseer to lead us in this time of counseling. Yes, the counselors are there already. Please give them your correct address. Please keep on standing, keep on standing. Keep on standing until you are attended to. Help them to get your information. The convener has told us here that you will have peace, purity, and power. This is the beginning process. How you can continue. So please give them the name of the quarter where you stay. And there is a place there that asks you a region of residence. They are not talking about your region of origin. We are asking about the region where you stay. Now. Then you should give a correct address. Yes, you give a correct address. Yes. You give a correct address of where you stay. Yes. And then you give your name. If you are living near a quarter, you should be able to give us the name of that quarter. Is there a, a public place near that place? Is there a boulangerie? Is there a supermarket? Is there, please, those who are not up for counseling, please sit down. Those that they are not being counseled, please sit down. Yes, you must understand something. That this address we are taking, it is to help you on how to continue with the law. And counselors take their name, take their telephone numbers. You know you have given your life to Christ. I know you will not give us a wrong number. I know you will not give us a wrong address. Please, you must be watchful so that we can continue to help you. Let the grace of God help you to give your correct address. I am staying behind Hôpital Central. I am staying near Boulangerie, this, this, this. I am in this quarter. And then the name with which you are known. 
What name do they call you in your quarter? That is the name you will give. And this is going to help you abundantly. Amen. So you must be prudent to give your correct address. Please, no noise, no noise, no noise. We are in the process of counseling. Then those online, please fill your address and your name and send to that number on your screen. And you should remember that on Sunday, the 2nd of June, we are going to have a believer's banquet. Those who have given their lives, they have become believers now. So in Douala here, all of us are going to meet in the Holiness Chapel. Bo Ancien Route Bonaberry and Fast uh, Station Afrigas. That is opposite the Afrigas petrol station. And it is before the American College. And before Atlanta College. So make sure you come there. Because there is something from the convener for you. There is a parcel from the convener for you. And on that day, he will speak to you. So you have much in stock for you. Please give your name. Give your contact. So that you can be prayed for. So that they can contact you and help you out on how to continue. Those in Douala, anywhere you are, whether it's in Douala 1, in Douala 2, Douala 3, Douala 4, do, uh, Wurif, uh, Littoral 5, that's Dwala 5. Uh, just put your right address. Are you in Manoka? Give us your quarter. Are you in Dwala 4? Bonandale, Bonaberi, Bonamikano, Bonabape. Just put that quarter there. Are you around Femenka? Or you are in Boadibo? Or Bakoko? Bomono? Put that name there and give us a public place that is nearer you. Are you at a road junction? You just direct us that this road junction, this junction or that junction. Now, wherever you are, just give us your contact. We'll get to you on phone. Those online, you fill the form. You fill everything there. And send to that number which you are seeing on the screen. They are going to help you. That is those in every part of the world. You can get connected with Christ by giving us your right address and your name and your contact. Please cancel us. Be prudent to take their correct address because the man of God is coming back. Final blow to all your problems. I say final blow to all the problems. He said at the beginning, carry go. You will carry your miracle today. Cancel us, you stay there. I'm telling you, you will see. You will rejoice. And you will go and tell. He said, don't be a spectator. You too will be a partaker. Anywhere you are, you will receive your miracle. 
cancel us. Please help yourself and help us to help you. You give the correct address. If we are finished, just indicate by lifting up the flag. That will make me to know that we are finished. Yes, on the left here, far back. They are finished over there. Yes, we are waiting for others. Yes, in the middle here and at the back. Yes, this other roll here. They are finished in the middle there and at the back. Thank you very much. Cancel us, yes. Yes, on my right hand side here at the extreme back. They have also finished there. Yes, we are waiting for you on my right hand side here in front. If you are finished over there, can you indicate by putting up the flag? And you must understand that the Lord wants to bless you. As you are beginning with it now, you have given your life to Christ. More blessings. The man of God said, carry, go. You will carry. I say, you will carry. Yes, and he said, that strength to stand will not end. You will continue to stand in the Lord. That is why you should cooperate. In front here, we are waiting for you to give your address. Then those who are finished and the believers who are there, you should pray. Be praying and get yourself ready because the Lord will touch your life. We must make sure we bring those converts to the different places where we are having the banquet. Like in Douala here, all the pastors, location pastor, district pastors, group pastors, and women reps, you must make sure you come with those converts to our banquet to Bonaberry. So that they can receive the gift of the convener. So that they can go back with their package. Then in all our regions, in all the ten regions of Cameroon, the far north, the north, Amen! The pastor has come. Amen! Your miracle has come. Your healing has come. The inhabitants of the land shall not say, I am sick. The people that dwell there will be forgiven of their iniquity. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who forgives all the iniquity. And who healeth all thy diseases. He has forgiven you. Now is the time for healing. Remember, this is the final day for this GCK. Blind eyes there today must open. The lame there today must rise up and walk. You know, somebody ran over here to the pulpit. My friend, my brother, your miracle is coming to you right now. As others have got there, you will get your own. I would have liked to just touch you, but heaven is going to touch you. You are ready now. I didn't say, are you ready? I said, you are ready now. 
Heaven is ready for you. Miracle is ready for you. Raise up that hand. And then lay the other hand where you have the challenge. You will be the next to testify. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because our miracle is ready. Our healing is ready. Our deliverance is ready. And I pray, Lord, everyone without exception. Heavenly touch. Healing touch. Miracle touch. In every life in Jesus' name. Sickness come out of your body. Evil spirit come out of your body. Your pain and suffering come out of your body. Lord, put healing on everyone. Healing in the brain. Healing in the eyes. Healing in the ears. Healing on the tongue. Amen. Healing to remove that swelling. Amen. Healing on the inside. Amen. Healing against that cancer. Amen. Healing against that ulcer. Amen. Healing against the heat in the body. Amen. Everyone healing. Amen. The Lord grant you your healing right now. Grant you your deliverance right now. And grant you the conquering power over every evil. It is now. I am healed. I am healed. The Lord confirm each and every one. He has done it. I will rejoice in the Lord. Put testimony in every mouth. Here at the Alpha location. There online. Everywhere testimony. Thank you, Lord. It is finished. Pain finished. Sickness finished. Incredible disease finished. It's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Did you hear 